This is what I like to see, oh baby. Yo, I got One Piece set four, Kingdoms of Intrigue. This is the fourth set of the One Piece card game in Japanese. This will be coming out in English in the fall. But I figured I'd tell a story about how I got into trading cards because being into trading cards wasn't something that I had going on my whole life. But um, when I was really young, I first got into, well, actually this is gonna be an extended story. So I'm gonna open up this whole case. I'm gonna do three, three boxes per video. So you get to see three boxes opened per video. And uh, I'm gonna just tell this story about how it all went down. Anyway, young Joku uh, was very into Pokemon cards. When I was a young man, I, I my mom's from India and half her family moved from India to Hawaii. I got a Blossom of Pack, Blossom. And uh, I went to Hawaii a lot growing up, so I was kind of exposed to Japanese culture by going to Hawaii. And um, I was really into, uh, I was really into uh, Pokemon. I really liked Pokemon cards. But my mom bought me this uh, Sun Gohan model kit that was really cool, and I, I built that in my grandfather's house. And that was my first exposure to Dragon Ball. Um, growing up, I used to watch Dragon Ball on TV, and I was in high school when one of my friends was like, dude, have you watched Dragon Ball in Japanese? And I was like, no, and he's like, you gotta check it out, man, it's hilarious. So I did. And he was right, it is hilarious. It's way funnier. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. So I got really into watching Dragon Ball in, in Japanese, which is a big change if you've watched Dragon Ball in English, like the voice actors are very different. I, I feel like the whole story itself is actually basically different because of how different that is. But um, I got into Dragon Ball and uh, I, um, I started, uh, I started, studying Japanese art history in college because I was an art studio art major and I had to take a um, I had to take a art history minor and fortunately there was a really strong Japanese art history program so I took Japanese art history and really focused in Japanese woodblock printing and when I got to Japanese who oh, those look great these look fantastic when I got into uh, my Japanese art history program, I got very into Japanese woodblock printing and I started making all these connections about how Japanese woodblock printing is related to anime. And the main one was, yo, oh, this Sabo looks so dang good. The main one was Katsushika Hokusai. Katsushika Hokusai is the one that um, drew the picture of that wave. It's a very famous, popular Japanese woodblock print, the great wave off Kanagawa. It was a series from it was a one image from a series called uh, 36 Views of Mount Fuji, but the, he was the guy that actually originally coined the term for manga. So the first time the word manga was used, it was used by him and it was used to describe a book that he made that was just all pictures. It was like picture book. Um, so that's where manga comes from originally. And uh, if you look through the history of manga and you look at woodblock printing, you see that there's a lot of these like really similar overlaps in the way that both of them are done. Well, that's what initially piqued my interest before I even knew it. Um, and then after undergrad, I took a trip to Japan and I found this game called Dragon Ball Heroes. I don't know if you guys know about Dragon Ball Heroes, but it's basically an arcade game where the, uh, the uh, cards come out of the arcade machine and then you use those cards to play the game. So it's like an NFC or like some sort of scanning technology that allows you to um, play the game uh, with these trading cards that come out of it. And I hadn't gotten any trading cards in a really long time. So it was very hyped for me to, ooh, yo, Rosinante, that's the secret rare. It's a pretty good looking card. And I think that's it really for these packs. So we'll get into the next box here. Um, but yeah, that was really my first exposure again to trading cards since um, Pokemon and I was so amazed by these cards I thought it was so cool because if you if you follow Dragon Ball or you're into Dragon Ball or watch Dragon Ball or whatever when you're Younger you would know that um, or now you'd know that characters have like a lot of different power levels So there's a lot of theorizing when I was young about like hey What if this character was like this or what if this character got this strong? Um, and that was really uh, I'd say, bless them. The most interesting thing about Dragon Ball Heroes is that 
Dragon Ball Heroes had all these characters that were like theoretical characters. And they're at these power levels that, you know, when you theorize about these, you're like, yo, what if this guy's hair got this long and he got this strong? Well, pretty much all of those were in Dragon Ball Heroes. So I was like blown away when I, you know, was in Japan and seeing these things that I had imagined when I was a kid were actually like real and in a game. And I spent pretty much like all of my money on Dragon Ball Heroes cards. I like emptied my bank account on Dragon Ball Heroes cards. Um, and when I came back, I started using those cards to make t-shirt designs. And, uh, well, I, if you've seen my, uh, my story series about my sumo wrestler friend, you'd know the story, but to make a long story short, when I was in Tokyo on that trip, I was walking around wearing some crazy clothes and I, uh, randomly met, like, one of the most famous sumo wrestlers in Japan. We became really good friends. Not, not current sumo wrestler, he used to wrestle. His name's Konishiki Yasukichi, and we became really good friends. I started making all his clothes and I started using the Dragon Ball Heroes cards to make t-shirt designs. So I'd like take pictures of them and make t-shirts out of the cards. And then uh, fast forward a couple of years, I was at um, New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con. And I was going to play uh, the Super Smash Brothers demo. Actually, before that, I was walking around and I saw this display case that had some Dragon Ball cards in them. And I was like, whoa, 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 what is this card? Specifically, the card I was looking at was called Height of Mastery. It's from set four of the Dragon Ball Super card game, Colossal Warfare. And I thought that was like the best looking Dragon Ball card I've ever seen. It was even better than the Dragon Ball Heroes cards. So I was like, what is going on with this? So the guy told me that I was able to uh, get, the, get that card from this booster box. So I bought a bunch of the booster boxes. And um, I was waiting in line to play the Super Smash Brothers demo at one point, and I had these uh, Dragon Ball Heroes Ultra Boosts that I made where I sewed some fabric that I printed with like a Goku, Ultra Instinct Goku card on it. Um, and the guy was commenting on my shoes that I was standing next to. Actually, I actually have a video on how to customize Ultra Boost somewhere deep in the history if you want to go check that out. Um, but this guy was checking out my shoes and I was like, oh yeah, like, uh, you know, it's from this game called Dragon Ball Heroes. They actually have this Dragon Ball card game over there. It's really dope. You should check it out. And he was like, man, have you ever played that game? And I was like, no. And he was like, you should. It's really good. So I ended up starting to play the game and cut back previous to this. I actually, if you go all the way back in my YouTube channel history, I got my start on YouTube with this game called Marvel Contest of Champions. Um, when I was in dental school, I had like a little bit too much free time and ended up playing like an absurd amount of this game for hours and hours and hours and hours. I think I was playing about like, hey, yo, that's the Dofi alt art. Pretty sick. I think this is the first alt art I pulled on stream also. Um, but I started playing uh, this Dragon Ball Heroes, or I started playing um, this Marvel Contest of Champions game and I got pretty, pretty good at it. I was pretty competitive with it. I, I had my YouTube channel. I was the first one to like rank five, this character called Gwenpool. That was my uh, first big move in that game. And um, it kind of got to the point where the game, like my relationship with the game was getting pretty toxic. So I had to, had to quit that. And I was looking for something to fill that gaming void. And that was, um, that ended up being the DBS card game. I ended up really liking it. I played a lot in Phoenix and I liked it because playing a card game, you can't just like log into a thing on your phone and play. You have to actually like be with people and it forces some level of like social interaction, bless them, which I think is healthy. So um, I would go and start playing in locals and uh, I, um, I didn't really want to make too much content for the game because I didn't feel like I was that good at it and I feel like if you don't have much to offer in the commentary or what you understand about a game like it's kind of whack to be making videos about it um, which is, there are ways to make videos for it that are fine but you know personally I just felt like I wasn't really at a point where I should or could be making videos for the game so I, I made some other kind of like random content and then eventually I started doing better in the game and actually like placing decently in tournaments and stuff I would love to pull this alt art um, and I, uh, ended up, um, I ended up doing pretty well at the tournament and then I decided I was going to start making content. So I started making some like deck profiles and stuff like that. And then one day one of my friends from high school came by and showed me, uh, Leon Hart's YouTube channel. And I was like, whoa, this guy's got so many subscribers and so many views and he's just opening Pokemon cards. Like... I opened tons of cards. I should just put a camera on me and record what I'm doing. So I did. And um, things kind of, you know, started moving like pretty fast with Dragon Balls getting uh, a lot of views and subscriber count was building pretty fast. 
Um, but I was really hoping for a One Piece card game, actually, because when I was playing Dragon Ball um, at a tournament, one of my friends that I was playing with was like, man, if a One Piece card game came out, I'd totally drop it for Dragon Ball. And I was like, dude, how could you drop Dragon Ball? It's such a good game. And he was like, yeah, One Piece is just a better game. So, or better story, excuse me. And I was like, all right, I'll be the judge of that. So I read One Piece and sure enough, One Piece is a way better story. <laughs> I got really, really into One Piece. And actually, when I started doing my like uh, branding for YouTube stuff, I decided to kind of like identify myself as a pirate. Um, and I used a lot of inspiration from One Piece, as you can see, like in my logo and in my whole uh, identity of pirate being. Um, and uh, yeah, I just started shrimping and taking videos. And soon enough, I made some connections with people that hooked me up with some cool stuff and got more and more into the game and into the scene. And um, oh, I think, oh wait, no, might not be in the blossom. I may have grabbed the blossom with the, hot, with the hit. Ooh, yo, this is what I like to see. Oh, baby. Well, that's a good one to end it on. Okay, so there's good, there's, there's uh, six more boxes or nine more boxes that I'm gonna open over the next four videos as I continue to tell this story, but that is a hit to be psyched about. Um, so tune in for the next one. Thanks for checking out. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip to you would be, if you're thinking about straightening your teeth, it's probably worth it. Even though aesthetic concerns may not be your priority, that aside, just being able to keep your teeth clean and have your bite in a functional good place and holding it there for the rest of your life is a good idea. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask in the comments below. Sankyu gozaimasu, and I'll see y'all next time.